All right, we have just finished the code book up. We did all the all the sections, every single coding exercise complete and finished. If I go over there, it will not look complete and finished because I had to clear the, the cache a couple times because of website problems. But as is well documented, I did complete every single coding exercise. And I also read the textbook somewhat when I wasn't not, I didn't read it out loud, obviously, while I was, you know, streaming or whatever, recording, but, um, so now we have this, uh, user survey right here that I'm going to go through and hopefully provide some feedback. Um, if anyone's, I guess this is the latest thing to come out. So if anyone is thinking about using the code book or what to go through, um, this should be, a it should potentially be useful for you if you're thinking, you know, do I want to commit to this code book? Do I want to go through it? I mean, obviously the easiest way is just to try it and see. Um, I'm also going to design it so that on the off chance that anybody who makes the code book or, I mean, I guess it's open source, so anybody could just do anything with it. But if anyone makes, wants to make changes to it, um, that, it, that I actually have useful feedback and not just, I'm not just going to be super nice or super toxic or something it's, it's it should be actually useful and informative for the makers as well um, so yeah we'll just get right into it i didn't actually realize i clicked on this as soon as i finished the other video that this was this is actually a a user engagement study you know i thought it was just some corporate feedback but this person here is getting a PhD at University of Victoria. I assume that's in Canada. I have not heard of that university, but yeah, British Columbia. Um, I wonder what M my tax is. Okay, I don't know. I don't know what that stands for. Olivia D. Okay supervisor okay could email them <laughs> i'm not going to oh here we go mathematics okay purpose okay this is like the terms and conditions right that everyone uh everyone always blindly agrees to but i'm, I'm actually reading it now okay this is yeah can feedback there is possible wait what is this you may provide please be advised that information values gathered for this research study uses an online program located in the u.s and oh yeah because the u.s government spies on everything that we do oh it's the u.s freedom act is that the new name for the patriot act hey what do you know <laughs> i didn't even realize they renamed it i'm not not an informed citizen um Inconvenience, risks, benefits, anonymity. Okay, well, I'm breaking the anonymity, but that's okay. All right, let's get into it. I have read it, and surprisingly, where did I hear about this? I actually saw it on Twitter. What level of education? I am an undergraduate. What best describes you? Undergraduate. How well would you say you match a target audience proficient in Python? That's me right there. Do you have any experience? Yes, I did the hackathon last year, um, but that's basically it. You answered yes, only a few times. For what purposes? Um, I guess I was just exploring. I'm in North America. All right, how long? Did you use the code book? Uh, I don't know. Is there any code book? Let's see. If I go, why did it not? There's, oh, this is so annoying thing. Like I don't put these ads on here. YouTube does. Very inconvenient. Let's see. If I go to my playlists, I go to my penny lane. How many, how long have I put into this? Each video is about 
Yeah, that's the one that's being uploaded right now. That just finished. Let's see, three hours, four, five, six. Okay, a lot of hours, many hours. I'll say, okay. <laughs> Let's see. First of all, here's a here's some feedback. There's a giant gap right here. I was gonna say like 15 hours is probably in total what I spent in the code book, but it's two to 10 and 20 to 40. Okay, first thing right here, first point of feedback, if anyone's gonna fix this, make, make a section that has some 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 gap here. Um, I guess I'll round up, it's 15 rounds up. I don't know, I'll say 20 to 40 because that was just a 15, I don't know, maybe 10 is total for videos, but then there's also other stuff I went through. So we'll just leave it at that. Also greater than 40, that's so long. To what extent have you completed the coding exercises? I completed every single one of them. In addition to the ones that aren't even labeled here yet, for each of the modules, how well do you think the code exercises match the prerequisites? Introduction. Yes, they were fine. Algorithm, they were fine. Grover, I don't, I think Grover was fine too. I think Hamiltonian simulation, that one I struggled with, I'll be honest. And not because of like, it was like annoying things, if you remember that discussion. Okay, appropriate, appropriate, difficult. And that might just because, I mean, I, I'm not gonna say I'm the perfect reviewer. I'm probably biased because I know less, but it did seem like the reason I struggled was not a lack of knowledge. Uh, to what extent did you, um, I'll do each of these. Yep. If you solved any of the pen and paper, oh, I didn't really do them. I'll be honest. I did not solve them by hand. I have enough homework as it is. How engaging you found the content. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how to answer this. How engaging. What does that mean? It's basically an interactive textbook. Is that it's not over here reading a novel? I'm gonna put neutral on them because I don't think I've ever read a quantum computing book that's like, wow, riveting. <laughs> Do you have any general feedback? All right, this is the end. Okay, for introduction. Did you find any errors? Yeah, but I'm not gonna make an issue. Do you have any ideas or requests for future modules? Let's see what's currently in there. Algorithms, Grover's phase, Fourier. What else even is there? See, I always go back to the, the sort of, I mean, right? This is like the big textbook that, what else is in there? Ooh, quantum walks could be good. Variational algorithms, chemistry, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll submit those. Okay, so first, I think all of these were fine. I'm gonna leave them, or I don't remember them. If, if I had problems with them, I don't remember them. But this one I'm going to say, um, so I'm gonna say, or maybe I'll, I'll think about that first, all right. What was I gonna say? All right, quantum walks. Uh, also, this video is not as informative as I said in the beginning. I realize now that that was an overestimation of my reviewing abilities. Um, oh, and var variational algorithms. Variational algorithms. We'll just leave it at that. I think those would be two good add-ons. All right, how intuitive did you find the user interface? Um, seemed, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put three here because the user interface was fine. Actually, I'm gonna put two, uh, I'll put there, I don't know. The reason I'm thinking this is like the core, right, of all the problems I encountered was that, okay, I'm definitely putting two. All the problems I encountered were that the using of the code interface was not was not good, right? I frequently had to, well, not frequently, but I inconveniently had to open up stuff in my own thing to be able to debug. I didn't understand some of the plots, didn't make sense or weren't labeled. So I think this is like, this is the, this is the big thing that I think could be improved.
is this interface from the coding perspective. I, I mean, I didn't read super in depth every single paragraph. So maybe there's things that could be clarified there, but this is what I think is the biggest thing. And so that's why I'm going to say the coding exercises are cool, but I do not think that I'll, I'll direct this feedback for anyone considering using this textbook. I would say use it if you're going to use it. I mean, I mean, try it out and, and see what you think. If you like to style, you like to style. If you like to style, use it as a textbook and have a little fun with the coding exercises. But I do not think the coding exercises really are that useful from a pedagogical standpoint. I don't, I think coding exercises can be useful. I just, I think some of them, I think a lot of them just aren't designed properly so that you really understand or help understand what's going on, right? I mean, I mean, some of the Python stuff is useful, but that that's my feedback for, for the, the users is what's useful probably and i can't even confirm this because i haven't read in depth the textbook but i can confirm that i do not think that the code is the most useful part of the code book and i now you might say to that well that's a unique thing right if i wanted to do well it's not even that unique i think that the latest and greatest kiskit textbook betas have code in them as well um, but not in a different way i guess than this and so you might say, well, why use it if, if there's no code, right? It's called the code book. And I, I mean, I don't have an answer to that. I'm not trying to sell you on the code book. I'm just trying to provide feedback. But that was my, I think that was my experience was that, especially since I'm not at all an expert on a lot of these areas. I mean, I'm not an expert on anything, but I don't know that much about a lot of these areas, but I could easily get through the coding exercises. So it doesn't seem like, Right, the coding exercise, like the knowledge should be a prerequisite for these coding exercises. So now I'm sort of talking to anyone who's interested in designing this or making similar things or whatever, right? Um, I'll, I'll write this down too. I'm just going to leave these blank because I, I think that's the structure is whatever. I, I don't have any problems with that. Would you like to see? Just say, I mean, yes, but I'm not fluent in any other languages. So we'll say, do you have any feedback? The coding exercises I had annoying experiences with the plugin coding exercises. X, holy cow, I can't spell. <clears throat> um, what should I say? I'm, I'm gonna write this first, then explain what I mean. There should be better ways of interacting with the backend. Sometimes errors will get thrown that make no sense, and I have no way to debug them. Additionally, the graphs are generated. Okay, I'll just leave it at that for now. I, I don't I don't know what to write more than that. I'll just say because I, I don't have like well structured thoughts that I'm gonna translate in the paper, but what I'm gonna say is that there's two things. One, I don't think so at first I'll say that the bug the bugs, right? That in my code is just I don't think it's a bug in the back end at all, is that you got to put a better way to debug things, right? That, that I got pretty annoyed in, in some of the previous instances of being able to work with the code is not always great because some, some error gets thrown. I have no idea why that error gets thrown. Not that Python errors are necessarily super helpful, certainly more helpful than C++ errors, but not that like a Python error by itself is enough, like a, a good reference, but it doesn't tell me, usually it tells you the line number, right? If I, if, I, if you're writing a Python code, it's like, oh, this on line 47, you know, this doesn't work. Um, but there's, there's no information provided for a lot of errors, right? For that, for example, that ufunk error, I just looked up with, with the GCDs. So 
there there has to be a better way and, and i don't know what it is i i'm not so maybe this isn't actually that useful but i don't know what it is since i'm not the all-knowing designer here but there are better ways of debugging maybe more ex optional exposure to the back end more ability to print things like i don't need a full-fledged breakpoints and all that stuff but just more ability to control the printing i think would be, literally be all you need to be able to debug things because there were times right like i was able to fix that gcd one because i could print and see like okay what's going on like something's throwing an error here so what's the error but there's previous ones where i couldn't print things so i i had no way to find the error and when i ran it locally it, it worked so maybe and then in some of those cases, it was a mismatch between what the auto grader expected and what I was giving. And what I was giving was right. It just wasn't quite what the auto grader was expecting. So I think improved debugging features and improved auto grading clarity would both be beneficial. Additionally, I think this is really more of a core thing. And I think people can disagree with me because I don't think maybe I'm the target user. Maybe I'm not. And so this is, you know, take this with a grain of salt is all I'm trying to say is that I don't think the coding exercises were exceedingly useful for learning. I went through, you know, I went through, I did every single one now. Okay. I could probably do realistically from like scratch with no reading. I would only be able to do up to like basic quantum algorithms. I'll be honest, like Grover's like and Fourier transform. Okay, I've done a ton of work with before, but I don't remember that off the top of my head. It's not something I think about all the time. Um, maybe phase as well. So I would have to to be able to do um, actually Grover's. I probably could because I do a, I've done a lot with Grover's, but like definitely with Shores, definitely with Fourier because I'm not a good physicist, so <laughs> I don't do that much Fourier transforms, right? I, I'm like, I didn't have to read any of this to be able to implement this. So it seems like, and, and maybe that's not the goal here. Maybe, maybe I'm, you know, misrepresenting it. But my understanding is that the goal of the coding exercises is to improve the understanding of the sort of theoretical physics or models going on here, right? So if I'm doing this coding exercise right here, I want to be able to understand the quantum Fourier transform better. And so understanding it is of course a prerequisite because I wanna say, okay, I understand what all these numbers mean. What does that look like in code? Whereas I didn't understand, I mean, I, I do, but I didn't like, I didn't have to think about this math at all to be able to translate this. And it, so it seems like it's more just an introduction to Penny Lane simultaneously as presented or, or simultaneous to this theoretical presentation and it doesn't so that's fine i guess it, if that's the goal then i think it's fine but i think it could be better in the sense that this could accentuate and aid the textbook in the learning process right now okay i definitely think i'm better at penny lane than when i started this i know a lot more about all of the functions in penny lane but i do not think that I learned that much about quantum computing from this, from just the coding exercise. So keep in mind, like this, I'm taking it all with a grain of salt. I've said that a lot, but I'm really, I'm not trying to sign, sound high and mighty. I'm just trying to provide, you know, honest insight here. Um, and, and so I think there's, there's room there for a lot of improvement in how these coding exercises are designed. If that's the goal, if that's not the goal, then you know, so be it. Uh, that's just my feedback. I, I, that's a long rambling point that no one, no one watching this will actually care about, but I'll put it there on the off. I'll just put it there since I wanted to put it there. So yeah, this video was probably not that useful for users or for um, <laughs> the, the makers of this, but if any groups, you know, are curious about my thought you can always ask just you know comment and i'll, I'll respond and I'll, I'll give my honest opinion on things um i'm I, i'm saying like i guess i sounded the last thing i'll say is that i sounded negative right i said 
I didn't really read the, the textbook part of it and the coding exercises weren't that impactful. And there's a lot of bug debugging and graphical issues with them. That, that sounds very negative, but I want to encourage this sort of thing. I think the more information is out there, the better. That's the very reason that I started this. Um, that's the very reason I started making these videos was to fill this sort of gap between, you know, basic classes or these textbooks and research. And so I think these textbooks, especially with like the latest Piskit chapters, um, these textbooks are bridging the gaps between that, that my, that I made these videos to fill. And I think, I think that's good. And I think there's a lot of room there. So I, I, I'm supportive of these efforts. I just, I just have a lot of, a lot of feedback, I guess. So I'll just stop it here or, or else I'm going to ramble on forever. Um, so I'll submit it. Well, I don't, I'm not going to link my video, but I, I could do that. Um, we'll, we'll submit it there. Not anonymous, but that's okay.